You are listening to episode 16 of The Scumbag. I'm Ed Zitron. And I'm Jesse Farrar. I really hope it is episode 16. I think it is. And you are listening and we are recording today on January 23rd, 2017. Little tactic I'm stealing from. I would call them a sister podcast if they knew who we were or talked to us ever. Uh, come town they they do that i spent around three hours driving yesterday just lit mainlined chapo trap house and come town and that phrase sounded better in my head at least it's hard not to pick up on the little cues and stuff that everyone else does isn't it yeah that or steal them like i i like thieving i love one way yeah, you, you could say steal I, you know whatever <laughs> i, I <laughs> love that i love stealing but this this week we we are post inauguration and post internet reaction to inauguration, I think the funny thing about it is watching the internet in their kind of weird neuroses deal with the several things that have happened. Of course, the inauguration of Trump, Trump signing a very vague bill about something to do with Obamacare that has been very poorly explained. Spicer going up and then saying that the inauguration actually had more people at it than were there and that the media was lying that like three people and a dog showed up and of course that uh we've we've well we've also had the wonderful women's marches and the absolutely wonderful event of known not alt-right nazi fuck spencer what whatever his name is something spencer i'll google it during this podcast nazi punched him face and the hilarious ultra left-leaning people who are like no you can't hit people in the face it shows a bad thing it's bad yeah it's uh it's 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 funny that i every time i went to go uh like put a piece of music behind the punch i would search for it and someone already would have done it like 10 times over so i it was something we could all get behind that it was the perfect clip to have a tune (laughs) laid underneath of it so everybody was on top of that it was great yeah, I didn't feel sorry for him at all until I watched the 14th person post one. And then I was like, oh, maybe this was bad. <laughs> no, no, maybe that, this was I think for me. No, I'm kidding. Point, I'm kidding. Really I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I think um, I, I, I think the best part was him like crying. That was really good. I really, really enjoyed crying. Well, I enjoy crying in general, but I enjoyed watching him cry and then watching him try and like pretend like there was some big thing here that there was some grand scheme and that we all need to watch out for shit. And yeah, that's the, like yes. you would think of uh, uh, if anything would shame these guys to shutting up forever, it would be being cold cocked and then endlessly uh, mocked and 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 made fun of and turned into a joke online. Uh, which is where apparently they live like their whole lives. And uh, it's, it's not possible. It's not possible to shame these guys enough. There's nothing that could happen to them that they couldn't uh, spin, right? And that's sort of like why they're winning right now. I mean, it's Richard Spencer being punched, though. What was really, It's like watching the least productive argument online happen as well between like, is it good that he got punched in the face? Is it good that someone randomly got punched in the face? No. Is it good that Richard Spencer got punched in the face? Yeah, kind of. Because the way I see it, like defeating him and his shithead Nazi brethren with by their own logic is not working. And you know what? Maybe punching him in the face won't either, but maybe he'll feel a little less fucking safe to stand in the middle of a street and tell people that there should be, as he calls it, what is it? Friendly eugenics or something horrible like that? It's like uh, peaceful ethnic cleansing, I think is the term he uses. Like that's not someone who should. And this sounds crazy. And there are idiots who are like, well, that's what the Nazi party did. It's like, yeah, he shouldn't feel safe to stand on the street and say that. I think it's OK for him to feel unsafe to stand places or say shit like yeah, that's- that. It's, it's it's the it's the continued conflation, uh, and maybe it's because we like to pander to our own intellectualism a little bit on this side of the aisle. It's the it's the conflation of, uh, of violent ideology with opinion. Uh, yeah, it's just not the same thing. Um, to me, it's not quite as heinous 
uh, in terms of extreme rhetoric to go out uh, in public and say, uh, you know, hey, I think we should uh, overthrow the government because they're not looking out for the people, which yeah. I will say in a vacuum uh, is true. But like, for instance, on the left hand side of it, advocating for an, uh, a violent revolution and overthrow of the government, you're probably going to get smacked around a little bit. Uh, and I think you should expect that if if you hold if you hold extremely violent views and well, extreme views on either side, people are going to take umbrage with it. I think. Well, you and I have talked about this before. It's like this idea that you know what there is a line. There is a like if someone is saying I advocate the overthrow of the government. I do not personally do this. I am I am talking of a hypothetical person. Please NSA don't don't kill me. But. If someone is there and they're saying, I say we should overthrow the government and they're standing there and they're peacefully saying it and they're not saying we should kill people randomly, we should rise up, we should fight for our rights, then fine. If they're talking about violence, uh, fine. Like, it's not good and they should be watched and monitored because you shouldn't violently overthrow the government. Like, and le- like there is... And then, then there's a line that I can never talk to because I'm lucky enough to live, have lived in two countries where... We don't actually, I don't think we're ever going to see anything like the brutality of the Middle East. And people will then in this vacuous nature go, well, you know, maybe we will under Trump. No, we fucking won't. But anyway, the point I'm making is that's one thing. It's one thing to stand and talk about it. It's another thing to say this entire race should just be killed, but it should just, it should be peaceful. It's like, what's your idea that like literally march them into an oven like they're fucking like worse than cattle? Because at least, like, they don't march the live cattle into the fucking oven. Like, it's... I don't know how beef is made, clearly. But nevertheless, <laughs> for, for, for I know for a fact that they end up horribly killing the cow. But, uh, but the point I'm making is, this person is advocating for the abject murder of people. Like, straight up murder. Just, just right there. Just And I think anyone... No one should feel safe about threatening people's lives. Or liberal or conservative or whatever, like no one should do that. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's right. He's he's like a walking, talking thought experiment. Like I think his, uh, if I didn't think he actually did believe these things, which I I'm sure he does, I would be convinced that his whole objective was to uh, make like philosophy majors like myself sit around and like scratch our chins over whether it's permissible to do X, Y, or Z to him because. He he floats on that line, like uh, so. You would say, well, you know, speech is speech, okay, uh, but you you shouldn't. Uh, so you can't incite things, right? But yeah. Is he in, is he inciting? Th- is he making a philosophical argument that just no. happens to be beyond the pale, uh, or or is he attempting to start a movement? You know, like there are these shit. This is uh, this is uh. I feel like the book has totally ruined this term now, but there are shades of gray with what he's doing here. Uh, and he's not Except just this like, guy has like never had sex. Like he's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a race car bed, but, um, but yes, yeah, is, I mean, as far as I'm personally concerned, a racist, I would not race- <laughs> a racist bed. I, racist I don't, bed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit the guy in the face. Um, because, uh, I, um, I don't want to be hit in the face. Um, yeah, that, but that's like it. Like I would not go and hit right. anyone in the face. I'm not unhappy it happened. And I think the, you know what? I wish there was a better solution. I don't even think this is a solution to the problem. I think it was just good. It's just fucking funny. And like, I'm glad he got, I'm glad he genuinely, because to have like I've been mugged once and I think I got hit in the head and I felt unsafe for a number of months just randomly on the streets. I hope he feels that because his actions have genuine, and he, he'll he never admit to it, but I bet he does. His actions have led to so many people of color and Jewish people and I imagine endless other groups feeling, or like whatever, I, I remember someone tweeting about him never being able to have sex. He's probably made several women feel unsafe too. He's like definitely someone who should feel unsafe, and he probably does. He probably walks the street, kind of twitching now, and I'm glad for that. And that's not that's not a philosophical point. I don't give a shit if someone thinks it's like I'm a bad person for that. He shouldn't feel safe. It is that's my weird fucked up justice, and just like all of my opinions, I will not research or care about other people's. <laughs> 
Yeah, turnabout's fair play. I think if his uh, if his goal is to make uh, the the people that he doesn't like or thinks are inferior to feel unsafe, then uh, yeah, I don't I don't think he deserves any special protections. I think if 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 somebody wanted to uh, trip him the next time he's gonna go get the paper or uh, throw a, a bottle rocket at his barn or whatever, <laughs> I mean that's all great to me. I don't care. That, that's fine. Kind of wish he'd like had a had a more comedic accident though, like someone have <laughs> pants him. Yeah, yeah, um, like swirly. He just like misadventures like Wiley e. Coyote style. Um, <laughs> he runs into a wall that someone's painted to look like this, it's we like need an to oak- ship him a bunch of stuff in a big Acme box and just uh, <laughs> and have him go through those with like a drone hovering so he can catch all the footage. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things where it's like, um, it, it, but actually, you know, let's move on to the, the actual inauguration, which was a really sad day. I think you and I called it like, a, when we were talking about it, it was a uh, snow day. And now yeah. I'm on a Monday the, after the inauguration, and it feels like the opposite. It feels like a worse day. Like I kind of had Friday off because of the inauguration, so I have all this other shit to do right. thanks to that. And it's it, it's really weird as well because, like, okay, like a few hundred thousand people turned up. They barely, like, half filled the National Mall. The parade had no one in it. It's finally beginning to dawn on me that this guy might have just won the election, but truly no one likes him. Like, genuinely, no one likes the guy. Like, really, like, the vast majority of people don't like Donald Trump. And it's beginning to show already. I, I want to believe that that's true. Or at least um, the people that turn up to this shit. <laughs> that that's yeah, that would be more what I was thinking. Like uh, because this this it it takes place in Washington D.C. Right? Um, no, I don't think anyone was thinking that uh, that that area, like the 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 Beltway, was all of a sudden going to be more representative of the 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 Midwest or or, yeah. or whoever the hell it was that, <laughs> that voted for be- the guy. Um, so, so to me, it's like, um, it's an interesting statement that the, the March, I think is far more indicative of something that's powerful, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and hopeful, but, uh, but as far as people not showing up to the inauguration, it's almost like, well, they're in DC, like everybody there is working, um, at it. So <laughs> why would anyone yeah. care? Which, which really that underlines the point of like, why are they making it? Why is it such a big deal to them? other than he's just out of his mind, uh, like anyone else, anyone with any kind of sense, you know, a similarly unpopular Republican, um, I can't even think of one, uh, but imagine that someone else were to have won the election and was unpopular and had not as good a turnout as the first black president ever. Um, maybe they wouldn't make such a big deal about it. Maybe they would just say, well, look, we're here to work, you know, moving on. It was yeah. bad weather, the end of the story. But this is like, uh, it's like, it seems to be driving him even crazier, just the way that it's filtered out into the rest of the people that are associated with his administration. It, uh, why is this such a, an earwig for them? Is it just, why does it get under their skin? I don't understand. You're, you're the most powerful guy in the world. Maybe just let it go. It's like you you won, dude. Well, that, and that's, to be fair, we're now falling into stuff that I make fun of. It's like this whole thing, like, the amount of people who have said shit like, you won, just give it up already. And it's like, what's what's really weird, though, is, by the way, he beat George Bush and what looks like Bill Clinton in his second inauguration. Like, because it seems that, I, I don't know, the numbers seem to suggest, like, it was, whatever, 500. Okay, um... 513,000, something like that. Like, his numbers, I think, still beat Bush, which is possibly his sign. But the idea, you're right, though, the Woman's March really did kind of prove that most of the world is genuinely distressed. Like, worse worse so than the second Bush administration. And maybe that is partly due to social media. Maybe that's just, it was easier to organize, or at least easier to broadcast. But it's also the one thing, I had hope for, like, three or four minutes maybe five. And then I realized something when I started to think about it and turned on the telly, I was like, Oh shit. It's not on anyone. No one was really co- CNN kind of covered it. And I realized 
no one's going to fucking show it. Right. No one's yeah, going to right. show it. It wasn't on it actual was, they, television. They showed him in church, right? It. Wasn't that what was, what was on TV? <laughs> What? They showed Trump in church. I, I, I think this. Oh is yeah. What, oh, sorry, I'm, sorry. I thought I thought you meant they showed the the woman's march in a church, like in random churches around the country. Ten women have turned out to march <laughs> into St. Patrick's Episcopal. Yeah. No, I think they they showed him at the uh, the prayer meeting. Is is that what it was that they showed instead? Like the most boring. Yeah. Yeah. And but it, it was would be boring just... even if you were actually there and he looked yeah. bored. It's it's like all like ch- like being at church. It yeah. was boring. It's yeah. like no one no one enjoys church. Like I don't know. I d- I can't go into churches. I set on fire. But I it's just that I'm. It, my worry is that we have like it was a huge like record setting amazing march, inspiring, powerful. I true I truthfully did not go because my fucked up angle. I'm not even kidding. Like, I really wanted to actually go, and like, someone called me out. At, like, random person was like, "Did you go to the march? What'd you do?" And that's when I've been donating a hundred dollars to Planned Parenthood every month. I my ankle is fucked up to the extent that if I walk more than the quarter of a mile, I begin being in excruciating pain. I'm sorry. I'll gladly Uber someone home, and they block me. <laughs> they block no. me immediately. Like, it didn't but really do. Didn't really seem to. Did they block you? Up. Were they at the march? Is it they blocked you from the march? Is that what no? It was? They were at home. They were at home. <laughs> like I and I, I didn't want to get into it. That it really didn't look like they went either. And it was and there was that weird. That was the weird thing. Like the the march was so inspiring. I worry. And again, it's very hard to actually tell how well broadcast it was. And I'm not having actual trouble finding people talking about it. Like actually finding out and doing a journalism to find out how many fucking people actually saw it on TV. It's, I I don't know how many people saw it, but I did see some fucking amazing, like, what's the term? Just, just moralizing about it. Like, oh, you didn't go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, screw you. You didn't, you don't care about woman and you're racist now. Yeah, everything is an event. Uh, for for springboarding your own uh, ego off of, and that, and that's fine because if that's what's got to get you out of the door, um, <laughs> and uh, and and doing something that I, I don't I don't know I don't I don't necessarily mind it, but it uh, it is contagious and people latch onto that to where um, uh, e- everything is um, it just can't exist it just can't exist in the real world because it instantly has to be uh, you know chopped and screwed and devoured and a million different little pieces about uh about the impact or uh the demographics or you know then it trickles down to the, like the darren rovells of the world and we're going to talk about the branding component of the women's march and a million I mean, a million shirts were sold across america that's just done from darren Ravel. we just ruin everything i guess that's just part of how we live now <laughs> darren Ravel tends to do that though on his i kind of wish darren Ravel would have marched and would have been, but would have sat there being like, I just saw an Adidas shirt. Yeah, I didn't actually well, see. I don't Pat's, know. Did he, did Pat's he have fans a take on here. It? No, I don't think he did. I do, I don't think it's because we were spared it. I just don't. Th- I don't think he knew it was happening. No, I'm no, I'm sure he, he didn't. He was, he, did, he was too busy looking up how many shoes had sold that day. He was elbow deep in an Under Armour rep at the time, so he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't make it out. One time, Darren Ravel called me for work. And he was like, uh, hey, Ed, how's it going? I'm like, it's like 9 p.m. Okay, it's 9 p.m. your time. Um, what's, what, I, what is, he's like, oh, I'm going to be up for another four hours. I'm like, okay. And he's like, I'm going to go to watch Jerry Maguire again. I'm like, uh, okay. He's like, it's the 10th anniversary of Jerry Maguire. I was like, okay. Uh, still don't know why you're calling, though. And he just was asking, like, one random question about a client. Wow. And it was just the most the most bizarre thing of having him rant to me about how Jerry Maguire's been on for so long. But he's and like, like in, how, but he's intense. And how, and how yeah, well, not not even intense. He was really intense about Jerry Maguire, then totally eased out because I don't think he likes the movie. <laughs> and he, but he I, just had well, the factoid he, his, like he just needed it to say it. Well, no, his piece was his piece came out the next day about Jerry Maguire. And it was just the fucking funniest thing. It was like, Jerry Maguire is bad for sports. 
Oh, wow. Oh, so he I, saw it. So maybe that was the first time he had seen it. It's like, how Like how does Jer- No, he, he watched it. it. It was like, oh, it was the 20 year anniversary, I think. And it was like, uh, oh, and then, um, by the way, the response, the brutal response like a month later was Bill Simmons and Chris Ryan abducted it into the Sports Movie Hall of Fame in the world's lamest sports commentator slap fight ever. Oh, boy. I fucking love those guys. Yeah, I'm I'm scrolling down his feed uh, right now, and uh, I'm not seeing anything interesting f- uh, for any reason whatsoever. But I do see uh, the thing circulated uh, a few days ago. No, it was just yesterday. God, this dude tweets a lot about bullshit. Uh, it was just yesterday. <laughs> uh, the thing circulating uh, about uh, Greg Popovich, uh, the Spurs coach, talking about uh, Donald Trump uh, with some real, uh, some very uh, cogent, coherent, interesting thoughts as as popovich's want to do uh so yeah. he so he so he quote tweeted that and said the most the most milk toast and neutral sentiment you could have about it and this is it we've entered an era where players are expected to take a smart stand it always <laughs> helps if a coach does too no matter what the take is that's garbage <laughs> that's nothing <laughs> I kind of wish I kind of wish he would have had a take on the women's rights movement and the march. I kind of wish, but it would have been like, women should have rights, but men should also have rights. Everyone and should no, have rights, and no matter what your favorite team is, we can all agree. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like Patriots fans and Falcons fans can all agree. That in the Super Bowl, <laughs> they are male. Unreal. And they're just like, oh, I'd love to have Darren Vell on the podcast. I'd love to love to just have him sit there just rambling. He's, he, I'm, I'm reading it now. He did, he did have a little tit for tat. Oh, yeah. Uh, with some conspiracy theorists that thought that um, he uh, was, uh, was promoting uh, one, one political viewpoint over the other. As opposed um, to his constant promotion of like anyone who gives him like free stuff. Yeah, that's that's this mm. is the one they have a problem with. This guy says <laughs> when ESPN approaches uh, the president to do the NCAA brackets with the same amount of hype as past five plus years, then I might believe you. Uh, and, uh, so uh, so for for people not in the know, the angle here is that uh, of course Obama is a huge basketball fan. And would frequently fill out his black uh, his bracket. Uh, Freudian slip there said bracket. Um, that's, <laughs> that's going all over the boards. That's going all over the subreddit. Oh, People are going to rip me apart. The scumbag subreddit is just oh, going to be popping off. Um, but it's, uh, so so he loved uh, NCAA ball and would fill out his bracket uh, on ESPN. I think he probably did it live, maybe even. But maybe it was taped as well. But anyways, it, it was a big deal. The president fills out the bracket. It's really fun. And in fact, became a talking point uh, later on where people would get on to him as they always do. Like, uh, well, it has time to fill out a bracket, but not time to figure out this economy or whatever the fuck. You know, it's a bunch of bullshit. But, but, but Darren says, do you think that Trump has the same passion for basketball? Do you think he knows names or teams? Um and uh, and of course it just devolves from there from some uh, jerk off who doesn't know anything, but but, but that's that's interesting though that uh, that people are gonna call out the the most the most neutral guy in the world for for being a a stan one way or the other that's wild. A, a two a a two gallon uh, bottle of milk from Costco yep. gives its view on the president. <laughs> <laughs> like oh. a, a a a a large container of Kirkman's beans, like. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's been interesting. I by the way, I just made the mistake of looking up and seeing if the scumbag, uh, it has ever covered has ever been on the subreddits, and it has. And someone says I have a stutter, which is quite funny, really. And I'm oh. not mad. I'm actually laughing and gonna kill someone. I'm gonna. I'm I don't just think gonna, you. I don't. Let's get into I, it. Let's talk about it. Do you have a stutter? Fucking, I don't think you have a stutter. I don't think I do, but considering how much this guy likes the podcast, I'm never going to die now. I'm immortal, and I'm mm-hmm, going to make this mm-hmm. podcast until this earth burns. Anywho, moving on. But it was 
it, it's really interesting watching about this resistance thing, though, because the resistance is... It, it, I was listening to Chapo yesterday, catching up on some some Chapos from December, actually. I was quite behind. And there was one that where someone really put it where... I think it was Felix, but it could have also been someone else. It was a very, very long drive. But it was... The, the resistance pretty much means we're going to keep posting. And that really, right, yeah. like, the people tweeted, good morning from the resistance. It's like, what's, what's that going to do? You think you think that, that all these people, in the same vein of, like, did anyone actually watch? Did, did they were actually broadcast? Maybe that's what they mean by the stutter that I stopped myself mid-sentence. But they, did anyone watch it on TV? Was it shown on TV? Was it shown on local news? Probably Probably not. Like, no one really actually looked into that. There was a lot of great pictures of, like, aerial shots all over the world of people doing it. But was there actually local coverage? Because I think that that's one of the big fucking things that people are missing out. Which is, it's the local thing. That's how the Tea Party won. That's how the Tea Party got aggressive. It was on the local level. And if they're not broadcasting it, no one gives a shit. Yeah, and if it was broadcasted locally, it was it was probably uh, like uh, uh, lots of traffic out tonight. You're not going to be able to get to uh, Tony Roma's or whatever the hell. It, it, there, there was no there, there wasn't an angle of like a grassroots political movement. It was more like no. an inconvenience or. Um, and well, I actually did see a puff piece uh, where it was talking about how dads were coping with women out of the house for the day. That was so good. It's like, I can't believe I had to clean out the fridge because my wife was at the march and I couldn't watch the big game. This guy incapable of like putting the football on in the background. Well, I watched it on his phone. I I can't do two things at once. It's like that, uh, what was with the HBO show that came and went in about two seasons? The, what was it? The takening? What was it? Where they all, all the people disappeared and, uh, what do you know what I'm talking about? The show with the, the only thing I remember about it is the, there was like a cult and they were wearing like doctor's jackets and they walked around smoking cigarettes all the time. Um, <laughs> the show sounds great. I didn't make this up, This, but if I did, I'm going to sell no, no, it to I, HBO. Um, it, it was, I think it was called the taking. <laughs> it can't be that. Was it that? It, I can't remember. I, I, let's let's well, bring it up online. Just take the, the taking is, was HBO. I love <laughs> you. Go it. ahead. I watched every episode. I couldn't get enough of it. I know all, everything about it uh, except for the name. Um, was but, that the uh, one with Richard Bacon in it? Richard Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon. Sorry, Richard Bacon's a British TV star. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Bacon. Yeah, well, he anyways, was. He was a he was a TV presenter. Who, uh, he did a racism. <laughs> <laughs> You've got everybody who ever did one cataloged in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like the word racism genius. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, but there's no good angle. That I don't think anyone took the angle of uh, of of look at this important thing happening. You have to go online for that, and maybe that's not so bad. Maybe we should just learn to grow up and go online. If we want to know about anything or hear or read anything, is that just where it's going to be? I don't think it's a good idea. Well, I think, I think what, what worries me and you tell me how you feel about this is this is all of the reactions. So summer Brennan, who is someone I've looked into and she seems to at least she, she can write and she's intelligent she's also someone who tweets every day good morning from the resistance i don't know if she actually went to any of the marches i I, i'm scrolling through her feed seeing if i can find good evidence of that because a lot of it a lot of it is just um her retweeting other people being at marches which is actually gets into the kind of performance nature of this politics she's signal boosting dude but signal boosting is cool and it's i actually do weirdly like it but my genuine feeling is like all right there are these people who knowingly or unknowingly have made their own going back to horrible pr shit personal branding it's this idea that you create this fake persona and we all unknowingly create this kind of face that we have online and so 
there are these people who have kind of and and I think as they lined up for the Hillary thinking that Hillary Clinton would win, they were all kind of like putting their chit in with like, all right, I'm going to be on the winning side and be the right side of history. And there was that wonderful post from October eighth, twenty sixteen. Wow, we almost elected Donald Trump. Right. Which which was so beautiful. It was it was October eighth. We've talked about this before, you and I. But it was like it was Isaac Schottener's wonderful piece. Where and I need to find the exact words because it was so so bad. It was just such a bad call, such a bad dick tripping. But it's um, come on, man. Where are? You? Please tell me they didn't delete it. Donald Trump could have been president. Let's not. Let's never forget what a terrifying thing we almost did. <laughs> still, still good. Still holds up. You know, I gotta say, still, it still holds up after all this time. Yeah, and but getting back to my very rambly point is, I worry that the woman's march might have only really been broadcast on Twitter, and it was huge. And it definitely was seen by a lot of people. But was it seen as a march or a really annoying inconvenience to a lot of people? That's what worries me, because the media does have a lot of control over this. And people, and ironically for Trump and all them with their attacks on the mainstream media, the mainstream media is not CNN. It's local news. It's the whatever Fox or NBC or CBS affiliate there is. That's what people watch. That's what is on in the background in diners or restaurants or at home, just in the background. That's what people watch. Was it on there? I don't fucking know. I don't know either. I I don't know. I guess the way I would, and I don't know because um, uh, I'm a very smart millennial. I don't watch any news. Um, But I got to say, to to me, the mainstream news still does feel like the cable news channels. It's just that they're all wrong in projecting uh, their opposition onto it, right? I don't think that anybody, I don't think that anybody that, that shares you know, even half of our general politics would say that there's a, a cable news source that represents those views. Um, I think, I think right wing uh, uh, aligned people would say, okay, Fox News tells it like it is, uh, and then um, and then CNN and maybe even MSNBC are these outrageous left-wing uh, repositories for crazy hippies. Um, and I don't know that there, there's just, there's obviously no factual basis for that as those two, you know, st- pick up steam by, by grabbing Fox's leftovers or um, N- Nigel Farage or, 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 uh, or whatever, whatever piece of crap flies off the right-wing dump truck as it goes even further right. Um, but I still think that that is still mainstream uh, news to me because my local news is not really politics in any way that is recognizable. It's more, and maybe this is just because I live in Nashville, um, but, but you know, the local news here is like, it's not quite as bad as, you know, kitten fashion show takes, yeah. t- t- takes the stage or whatever. It's more like, well, the country music awards are coming up or, um, well, local uh, local thing happened. Yeah, local thing like happened, and it's hard to even ascribe one viewpoint or another to it because it's so granular. Something going on in my town now is people are arguing as to whether or not to tear down the old courthouse to build a new firehouse, and I don't yeah. even know what. <laughs> I'm not even sure which polit which political view either side would represent it's hard to put that in one of the buckets and i remember when i so just after college i went to college in aberyst with wales which if any listener knows what that is i'm very impressed aberyst with that classic town we all know and love <laughs> i lived in pennsylvania for close to a well i spent my college year there and i spent many 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 months afterwards living and living sleeping on people's couches. They did know I was there. I didn't break in, but they, I was, I would watch the TV and it would always be like local break in local politics. Like the, the comptroller has said that his dog doesn't like black people or something like that. And it was, 
perhaps not that extreme, but it would be like the local cool controller got his hands stuck in a fucking storm drain because he dropped a porno mag or something. It would be some like <laughs> local scandal. Right. And my question is, what were those? And that would be like an NBC, Fox or CPS affiliate. You flick through them because I was genuinely interested back when I was young and cared. And it was, it was interesting because I want to know if those ones did, because that was central Pennsylvania. That was probably if the people who voted Trump were anywhere, they were definitely in the town where I remember an ex-girlfriend's mother who had like 11 teeth yelling the N word and lamping a half full can of Natty Light at a TV. Wow. Yeah. Pencil Tucky, right? Yeah, it was, it was, it was one of the most amazingly racist things I've ever seen. And it was just like the black guy being interviewed, I think about like shopping. Like it, was just, it wasn't like a criminal. Black people just, love to shop. It's just, it was, I think it like a new Walmart opened. And that was the story. Right. And she was just like, nah, and just yelled, lamped her can. I don't know how the TV didn't break. I think it was one of those old CRT ones. So I think they're like made of something very bad for you. They don't and make it just them like bounced they off to, and like beer went everywhere. And she picked it up and like drank the rest, which was actually <laughs> like, kind of like, didn't clean it up. Yeah, I respect that. But the, but get, I also feel like there is a performative nature to how people handled it. And I, I think signal boosting is great. That is absolutely the fucking thing. Signal boost the shit out of every one of those big things. But it but it does get back to that level of okay, um, why are you doing this? Why are you like why have why have all of these because you'll see if I've seen a few retweets of this, but not many people saying the hey, cool, so that happened. What next? What's your what's up next for you? Are you gonna do anything? I mean, I can't vote. I guess I could do some political stuff, but I literally can't vote. I am a legal permanent resident. And, and a felon so, as well. <laughs> I, if I was a felon, I'd be kicked out of the fucking country. That's the set. Well, not sad for everyone else. Um, but the point I'm making is, it seems we've now returned straight back to the kind of performative thing you saw before the election and now during his presidencies. Presidencies? Shit, that's dark. Um... <laughs> Of, the, of this thing of Trump being a bad guy. Like, I'm looking through Summer Brennan's feed, and I don't know Summer Brennan. I don't really know enough about her to make a fair judgment. But again, rash judgment's what the show's are about. One of her tweets is like, just making a statement. Trump is a fascist. That is not, that is not hyperbole. <laughs> it's just like, why are you fuck? Like, what the, f- what? Like, okay. A retread, I, or a retreaded idea at best, probably. Um, would I mean, be a kind we, way to, to put the idea. I mean, it's just, it's the same performance thing of yeah. like, I'm going to be this person. I think there were some people who were planning to be on the right side of the tracks when Hillary got in, who didn't, who are now just kind of like desperately shaking themselves in. I think you mentioned it once, though. it was like, you compared it to, what was it, sportscasters, who, or the people back when they were behind the... Behind the announcers, was it? Yeah, yeah. How um, you know you 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 have to start writing your stories before the game is over, um, because if you don't, you'll never file on time. And I think a lot of people have, uh, a lot of people have taken that attitude and applied it to uh, everything we do. Like uh, we have a lot of preconceived notions, uh, especially those of us who are online pundits, for lack of a better word. Um, I don't think that anybody is any longer able to be convinced of anything. Um, it takes an extremely strong person to admit when they're wrong in a relationship, but yeah. relationships are relationships work that way. Personal relationships work that way because you both realize that it is uh, a zero sum game and you will be affected by how the other person decides to treat this interaction the next time around. But online, there's no repercussions for anything um, outside of getting docs or whatever. And um, and I guess that happens to enough of us that, that it does come back. But, but there's no reason to ever admit that you're wrong. Therefore, there's no reason to wait until you have all of the facts and information to, to begin forming in your mind the opinion and the narrative you're going to continue to spout well after the fact. 
And then there's no reason to get involved because as far as you're concerned, you've already done the mental lifting of, of being involved, which is like saying it. So, so it's just a, it's just a cycle. We, we, we figure out what we think about something way before. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to suggest that this is like, well, let's give Trump a chance. Cause no, don't give him a chance. Fuck this guy. Um, he's been very clear about what he's going to do. I don't think that there's any reason we have to wait for him to actually do it to feel upset. But, um, but as for the people who seem content, uh, to just cyclically like try to generate a catchphrase, like they're making bumper stickers or something. <laughs> um, I, I understand the impulse. I really do. I it's, yeah. it's just, you just, you go on autopilot. And it's aggravating, but I guess for them that they get something out of it. I don't know. Well, there's, and, and I think there's a real division in there as well, because it's like, it, it's like you said to me before, this idea of, it used to be back before they literally threw them in like the worst seats ever. The media used to sit behind the sportscasters and they used to, you've told me this, they used to sit there and they used to write the game out beforehand. And when they got surprised, it was like a rush to write it properly. Yeah. I think that there were a lot of people who expected Hillary to win and just kind of fell into this thing of extolling how bad Trump was kind of because that was Hillary's policy. Hillary didn't really have policies. It was just, well, I'm better than this twat. And right. She'd never say that word. And I probably shouldn't either, but (laughs) I was describing a guy. So it's okay in England. Um, But I think it's that so many people were winding up for that. And they were doing this kind of quote, tweet this thing that they ended up almost accidentally, well, they're now in desperation status as they try and search for an identity in this new world, hence the join the resistance that you're not really fighting in thing. But a big part of it for me as well is it seems a lot of them are just desperate for, if not relevance, they're desperate for something. They just want, they don't know what to make of it. They were so dedicated to and so invested in and so stuck on this idea of Hillary getting in, how inevitable it was based on this echo chamber of Twitter that they now, their world is, if not being destroyed, it's been cracked. Or, or their, but their social circle in particular, right? Because, yeah, you know, you were talking about the, the women's march. And I think as everybody has very astutely pointed out, Hillary wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody who was a leader of a legitimate movement or somebody who had a backbone uh, or a desire to uh, govern in a way that was not purely just to be a figurehead for banks or oil companies or or whoever it was that was going to pull her strings once she got in there, as we all uh, knew would happen. That person would have been out there, um, I think. Bernie Sanders was. (laughs) Yep, Bernie somehow, and, and he has a penis as far as I know. Uh, uh, and I, I checked, and he does. <laughs> I, he's he's got balls. Ed, he's a, got balls. Take, take a take a look, Ed. <laughs> it's, I'm never doing that impression again. That was fucking awful. <laughs> it was pretty good. No, it was good. Uh, yeah, but Bernie, he has a penis. His penis is under the balls, but he's still got <laughs> one, and he's out there, uh, Mart, and she's not. So the the people that that get under our skin so much. Uh, are are definitely the, the the Hillary men, as you guys like to say, and uh, they were the ardent supporters that were trying to angle themselves for a job or 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 to to be some social media uh, person or or some garbage. And now that they, they cut the head off the snake, I mean, they, you just got to admit that they did. Trump did, and all the frog guys online cut the head off the snake, and <laughs> she's wandering in the woods or. She's, I don't know, maybe she's eating lunch with Trump. Like, I, I don't think anyone really knows what she's doing. Uh, she's at his inauguration. It was she, yeah, she showed up for that and wore white so bravely. And she they, wore and white. they clapped. Like, they fucking gave her a standing evasion. No, it was one of the inauguration balls that she was at. Oh, okay. 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 Well, yeah, let's still let's shit. Let's be clear. Still, still fucking <laughs> terrible in yeah, like she, so many ways. She, she, she yeah, could she, turn she, up she, for that. It's, uh, but it's embarrassing, but, but she's there, uh, she's living her life with a hundred million dollars or, or whatever, and life will go on for her. And, uh, and the rest of these people are, like you said, desperate. Uh, they're just floating around nobody to latch on to because they spent months saying how bad the Bernie bros are. So to crawl back to the only person who seems like he's got his head screwed on halfway straight, uh, in the party right now would be admitting defeat 
So what what are they? They're just they proselytize. That's the only thing they know how to do. It's feeble and ineffective and annoying. Uh, and I guess that's <laughs> I guess that's just their game plan until somebody else shows some other yes queen shows up that they can get behind. I don't know. I think the saddest thing I saw as well, like the most depressing of these people, was I think it was Joan Walsh. I actually almost feel bad for her. Like yeah. almost because she made this what the 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 queen of the vapid tweets. Like if there was one to be crowned, it was the, this tweet. It was I paraphrase. Hillary is just going to get up there during the march and just walk with the woman just because she's just one of us or something like that. And of yeah. course, Hillary Clinton made she didn't even make it. One of her staff made a tweet. And it's like, oh, that is a fucking gup. And then she went around like retweeting people, including me, who are like, so. Well, in my case, I just I, I just quote tweeted it, which was I don't know if it was mean. Probably. I just quote tweeted yeah. it. It, it was it was mean. I'm sorry, Joan. I really I I actually regret it. I don't really want to make anyone upset. But I I quote tweeted it and was like, man, it was so powerful when her staff member made that one tweet, and she retweeted. It. She was retweeting everyone who sent that. It and I don't know. I I I think she was possibly doing an. I'm not mad. This is funny to me. I would actually respect right. her if she just went fucking hell. Fuck Hillary. That would actually be really funny. I wish someone would do it. Like, just like, come on, you fucking t- well money piece of shit. Do something for once. Yeah, how but, much can these people take? How much? How many times can they get spit in the eye and then just uh, and then just keep on trucking? W- wouldn't you get discouraged eventually if that was your mo? Well, I think it's actually good for them. Good for these people who have invested so ardently in Hillary Clinton that she's not doing much because there's less to criticize. If she was getting out there and bumbling through Trump's policies, which she should be, I would actually respect her, even if she was completely shit at it. If she bumbled through whatever Trump's saying, which truthfully can't be that hard as it's like fourth grade English, but it's it, it, she could sit there or on Twitter and be like, ah, this is bad, Matt, this is bad. And also, also the Bernie bros are currently having an issue where... Um, Bernie kind of said yes to Mattis and another one of Trump's people. He like he voted yes. Then people don't like that, understandably. Oh. Yeah, great job, Bernie. Um, but again, there's probably more complex things than I understand. But at the same time, also that ain't a great look, buddy. But yeah, I don't know. It's it, I think that there are for example, there's someone like Parker Malloy, who's this upworthy writer who I have great respect for, despite the fact she unfollowed me on Twitter, which is a cardinal insult and actually illegal. <laughs> And she's an example of someone who's not like Judd Lagoon, who I truly think was definitely angling for some kind of, or is still angling for some sort of vapid Hillary Clinton thing, or like Democratic thing, where he'd get paid 150 grand to give them vague ideas about that Twitter exists. And he does every story he posts, he tweets out 15 tweets in a row that is literally just the story. But Parker Malloy's someone who literally writes from Upworthy, so not the most respected publication in the world, literally the one that Im- invented the, you won't believe what just happened when this cat fucked a dog thing. And, that, and that's still on. The website is sti- still on. Sti- it still exists. It's it's not doing well. But nevertheless, she is one of the honest ones where she had like a following of like 12 people, right? Slight hyperbole, but she didn't have a big following. But she kept making these points of like calling out Trump policy, bad Trump policy. And now she's very well followed and everything she tweets gets like 300,000 things. And again, I'd respect her a lot more if she hadn't unfollowed me, which is horrible. But you've got people like that who I feel are probably lumped in. To be fair, they've also probably benefited from. But they've been lumped in with these these kind of ghoulish people who, have, especially transparently when they're not going to march, is not really doing anything now other than tweeting Trump is bad. The people who are doing the real work. The people who are actually really giving a shit and trying to call out and trying to keep a voice going, even if it is the, in the echo chamber of Twitter, I argue they're not being signal boosted by these fucking people who are still going for like political policy jobs. And my point is more, it's just like the, I am, I'm deeply worried with the March, with everything else that Twitter is the worst kind of echo chamber right, right now. I don't know if it's remotely representative of anything because it's not affecting Trump. What affected Trump was the inauguration numbers, and those were everywhere. 
I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't think Trump said anything about the march. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, he did one tweet where he was, he basically had, he dropped a pretty sick burn. It was actually a solid burn where he said something along the lines of, "Wow, if it was, it, that, it was under the impression of, we just had an election, right?" Yeah, well, yeah. It was something like that. It was, it was like I was under the impression we just had an election. Where were these people then? Which is actually fucking true, and and like a horrifying horrifying thing for these people to face up to because yeah um, c- celebs hurt cause badly i mean he yeah like he he did kind of hit a home run on that one that is right and uh, yeah especially with scott and scott johansson i mean she did more than i did i didn't go to it so really kind of shitty for me to criticize but there we go keep going um <laughs> she she got up and she did the most lifeless like I believe in woman. It was kind of like the movie Lucy she was in where she also couldn't act. She got up there and she's like, I believe in women's rights. They are good. Support the woman. They are full tough, of hel- uh... healthy blood. Like, it was it was the, the most robotic speech. I mean, people were cheering because I think they would have cheered any woman going up there. Well, Probably her mic was cut off. That was what they were cheering. Her mic was good. She didn't, nobody <laughs> yeah. could hear what she was saying. They are just looking at her. <laughs> it's booing. <laughs> But it's um, but I just worry about how effectual this I want it to be. I actually think the it it is one of the it's one of those things that it could be world changing. But I'm worried about whether it's only that big looking on Twitter. Sure, it's in the New York Times, but is it in? Are the local papers reporting how many people went? Like I, I don't know. I don't. And will this be something people remember in a week when Trump announces that all dogs must be killed or something? Like how quickly, you know, I, how quickly will he get rid of it with his ability to say horrifying, shitty things all the time? I think it just. What are the goals? Uh, whether Twitter is important or not or whether the local news is important or not, or whether the protests are important or not, all of it depends on what the goals are. So yeah, if your goal is to stop Trump, then everything you're doing is useless. Um, yeah. You're not, you, you're not going to stop Trump. Um, you're not going to uh, make some kind of statement that affects his policies in any way. Um, the best you can hope for is that he accidentally does something that benefits you. Uh, and that's my, that's my hope. I hope he accidentally, uh, institutes single payer, uh, and is just such a strong, he signs uh, the wrong document. Yeah. I just, it, it just, he just bulldozes everybody and they say that you're not, you weren't supposed to do that. And he'll say, ah, well, whatever. I already did it. So it doesn't, I fucked your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you won't, you won't stop him. So everybody concerned about stopping him can, can just, just just stop just chill uh you can there's some relief here you don't have to work hard anymore it's like we're pulling the plug on you like you don't have to fight this battle anymore you can just close your eyes and go to sleep and, and go see grandma it, that's over with he's the president now and he'll probably be the president for the better part of a decade uh so whatever he wants to happen is going to happen generally um but if your goal is to uh, uh, by the same token, if, if, if your goal is to change people's minds who voted for Trump, uh, you're not going to do that either because so many of those people, uh, are, you'll just never get to them in the first place. Like they're insulated by dozens of layers of their own cognitive dissonance and social spheres you'll never penetrate and all other stuff. So forget about that. Uh, but if your goal is to get more people to vote because you feel like statistically it's true that more people in this country are sympathetic to the the liberal or the left uh, ideology that many of us agree with for the most part, especially when it comes to domestic policy. That is something you can think about affecting uh, hmm. Because the the turnout numbers are generally something that can change and has an influence, but you're not gonna flip sixty year old white guys like that's never gonna happen. They're always yeah. gonna do this. You just in have fact, to. You're going to embolden them. them. Like, like that's idiot, right. Yeah, idiots like Pierce Morgan who are like I want a men's march. Like like straight straight up, so close to the tweet. Like why is there not a white hawk down? 
and <laughs> like and but but you actually and there's another point as well i think the you while well, you're definitely not gonna you de- you will definitely make trump and they definitely succeeded in make tr- making trump uncomfortable mm-hmm. but i think that there was also another big success of the tea party movement and there's a, there's a democratic movement against the space against well trump and and these are people actually succeeding in doing something that could potentially affect trump in any way basically they said let's copy the tea party movement and basically go after local things if anything happened from this and i think that the the you're right about this in that a lot of people might be going thinking this would stop trump so somehow and frankly if it has a better another effect that's good i don't really care why they were there like it's 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 a good thing regardless of motive as long as they don't use it to advance their careers but it's there is definitely something to be said for proven by the tea party movement rankling local authorities if mm-hmm. they believe if if your local mayor but mayor of a medium to large city is genuinely scared that when they fuck up on a woman's policy that there are going to be thousands of women or even hundreds outside their door yelling they are gonna because fucking congressman all the way down to the weepiest man who's in whatever backwater town they all care about getting reelected. that's all they give a shit about they don't care about their fucking constituent they just want to be there they just want to stay so if that's what like if that has been the if not the goal then the net result of that that's where shit could change because that's what will change voters that's what will change hearts and minds here it will be this idea that you know what i'm not going to keep my seat in the house or i'm not going to remain mayor if i keep supporting this horrible piece of shit president or i keep voting for anti-abortion things like i'm not going to retain my power and that may be a horrible reptilian way of these horrible fucks living but you know what if it works it works and that's what my hope is that's why i i still hold a little bit of hope because it was definitely undeniable even if it was only seen on twitter and it's going against my own cynicism here even if it wasn't seen on twitter there is a good chance that the local mayor saw it and went ah oh, fuck they're gonna come out like this every time the question will be, is that follow-up there? Will they come out again? If like a quarter of them do, even if like a tenth of them do in certain towns, that could change things. That will stop Trump on a local level, which will stop Trump in general. It will. It, that will be what, like when, like when there's the uh, midterms, that will be what happens. Like that's the change agent. That's what I'm praying for. But I don't think these people online who are tweeting welcome to the resistance or whatever are thinking. I just think they think if they tweet that Trump's a misogynist enough times, someone in Congress will be like, oh my God, he's a misogynist. I better stop this guy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's right. I think that uh, one thing that works against us is uh, our short attention span. We want to flit from one thing to the next very quickly. And but, But I will say that the nature of Trump as a president is such that that might actually not be such a big deal because, you know, if he were the Republican version of Obama, it would be uh, he he drone killed some people on their way to a wedding and then was totally quiet for three weeks. Uh, <laughs> and we just went back to talking about yeah. Fear the Walking Dead or, or whatever it is that we talk about normally. Uh, and then there's no there's no... Uh, there's no push for that anymore. There's no passion for that particular topic anymore. But Trump is so stupid and so loud that I feel like I don't think there's going to be a day that goes by that I don't, that I'm not conscious of him as president, that whether he said, pardon me, whether he said something or whether Sean Spicer got up and said something uh, abhorrent uh, and, and barely coherent I don't think there are going to be too many days where we're allowed to forget uh, who is running the country. And I think that maybe that keeps that fire lit a little bit more for people when they're constantly reminded of the nonsense that's going on. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think that as well, I think that there's also this, this hope I have as well. And I feel, I actually genuinely feel like shit, not marching. I really do. Like, 
I, I, I really wish I had gone out. I really wish I had done it. I, and I realized that that's kind of useless now it's happened. And whatever useless donation I do is not as powerful as those people going out. But it's like, yeah, and there fu- is such... Fucked I fucked, fucked up, up bad. I, I suck. Um, but there's genuinely, though, there is some hope, though. I really think if there is even a little bit of this pressure, if people who never marched before are now willing to go and just yell outside places, as silly as that sounds, I think that could work. Because already these the establishment's kind of like, oh, God, who is this guy? Like, even Paul Ryan, who, like, dreams uh, vividly of poor children dying on his doorstep and him getting to kick them off. Like, even he is kind of like, oh, oh, this is this guy. He is, who oh boy. And it's, we may, uh, every day, I, I get a little bit closer to thinking, he is just one day from pissing off everyone in his party and just getting, like, steamrolled, and then that will make him slap back and do what you said. Like, he'll accidentally make single-payer happen. Yeah, by, or, or by, spitefully. Well, also, presidents have a lot of power, I hear, and they can just make shit happen, right? They can just do a presidential veto or something. I, I don't know politics. So, sometimes they can do stuff. Uh, that like, much we know for sure. But couldn't he just, like, be a dick and just be like, I want to do this, nah, I'm president now, because he's that much of a big baby? Like, couldn't that happen? Couldn't he just sure. do something? It, sure. He if could not on d- the single-payer divert- level... Yeah, probably not there, but I mean, he he could certainly make some senator's life uh, increasingly annoying, uh, diverting funds from a pet project of theirs, or uh, oh, I mean, he's going to Chris Christie them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or or you know, that's probably not really his style. It's that's too political. Something it's too, more. It's too ba- behind the scenes. He'll just tweet about them. Yeah, or he'll he'll have a big lunch with all the senators and won't invite the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> or to give him a very bad tea time at the golf course like he's just, he's gonna like 1980s boss comedy the guy until he gets super pissed off and resigns that's that's probably his move <laughs> but this is but this is the presidency we might look forward to like one where it's it's both terrible and really basic the the basic plot of a children's thing with like like storks or whatever yeah yeah like there's a boss stork and the stork is like manipulating everyone I just watched a movie called Storks, but that happened, so it's fresh in my mind. You just watched. That's you what watched I do with, Storks. I watched Storks. It wasn't bad. It's all right. And did but you wait. watch that in your car while you were driving cross country? Yeah, yeah. And somehow the autopilot did not kill me, proving that that guy died because he was watching Harry Potter. <laughs> you made you made the most disgusting joke on Scumbag TV about that. <laughs> <laughs> what did I like, say? What, what did I say? I think he said something along the lines of, um, much like the final two Harry Potter films, his head was not meant to be in two halves. Oh, oh, Christ. <laughs> I, I remember watching that and screaming with laughter so loudly. <laughs> well, I, I stand by my, it. That that movie My was... fiancé came into the room and was like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> But wait, we've, we're missing a very important subject, though. And, and, and it's storks. And it's storks. No, it is the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. I, th- I think we need of to course. discuss the Nintendo Switch. And the, the internet's ensuing reaction, there's only one more insufferable reaction to the, the Switch, which I'm quite excited about. Actually, both excited about both, but the new Star Wars film being called uh, The Last Jedi has got people incapable of cogent thought, and they're like, ah, it means Luke's gonna die, despite the fact he was called The Last Jedi in both Return of the Jedi and the last film. But Star Wars gives people brain poison, so... That's right. But anyway, Nintendo Switch, are you excited for it? Because I am, and I'm also a bit worried. Because I did some digging. Oh, okay. So you've got some inside info. Yeah, you know, my info is very surface level. I'm excited about it. I think it looks like fun. The, the The main thing I like to do with the Wii U now is kick back in the recliner and and play on the handheld, especially when games are uh, suitable for that purpose. I'm playing a Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze right now. I think is what it is. Uh, right. And I'm and I'm almost thirty years old. Uh, and I'm but I'm into it. I like it. It's cool. Uh, it looks great on the little tablet. Um, 
I wish I could move a little further away from the console and the TV into another room, uh, maybe at times when I need to go upstairs, whatever. And, I mean, the Switch is certainly designed and capable of doing a lot more than that, but just for my own selfish purpose, maybe this will tank Nintendo, and Nintendo won't be a thing anymore, but I'll be able to play Mario two rooms away, and I'll, <laughs> I'll be happy with myself. So I don't know. Maybe that's how it turns out, but I'll be okay. I Well, I'm excited because it genuinely ticks a box I've always wanted from gaming, which is if I'm traveling or I want to go into a different room and play something, I can either play it on the couch, and I can have a portable experience that's comparable to a console one, anywhere i can go and travel with it and i love this idea of the dock system where you have you have your nintendo switch and you have an hdmi port that you use at grandma's and you've got the dock sitting there i don't know you have the dock in your car and you bring it over to a friend's house and i think that that's exciting my one problem and when we were prepping for this episode we were talking about this is i don't know how powerful it is and i don't know how powerful it would be the breath of wild Breath of the Wild, the, the Zelda game that literally they they play that they'll always put a Zelda game. And I'm actually quite surprised that they're putting out one at the beginning. Me too. Like they they usually stage it out far enough so that people will keep like keep people from like putting the console in the trash. Right. And but it's apparently 900p. Yeah. Whatever the fuck resolution that is. It's 900p. It looks pretty good. And I think that when we were talking about this as well, I think this console will live on, live and die based on its third-party titles. And I think that that's economically. I think its ability to survive long-term will be based on that. And I know you have another point here, which is actually pretty smart, about maybe the other, the other Microsoft and Sony should have better first-party titles. But I don't know. I get this feeling that if they can't pull up the britches and actually get the get like they have NBA, they have FIFA. If they can't get consistently the Maddens and Call of Duties of the world, people are not going to buy and use this console. I believe there's a big market for that portability and the sit down console experience. And because the controller is normal for once, I think it will be a big deal. But I'm also worried that the console is just not up to snuff. At, f- at first I was excited, but now I'm just, Looking at these, not even the specs, just the fact that whatever 900p is, sounds like something that you accidentally set your monitor to and everything's blurry. It's true, but, you know, I've got the... So I've got the the bog standard PlayStation 4, the release day PlayStation 4. I have not felt compelled to go get the one that's capable of 4K. Um, And the same thing with... 4K TV? I do, I do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I I was just wondering if that was like... Uh, I'm really. St- I don't. I don't have a. Te- I don't own a television. <laughs> no, that's actually really. Yeah, go on. I'm actually really curious about that. So you you actually have a 4K TV and won't and have not got a pro. Yeah, well, you that's don't feel right. Compelled to. I don't. Yeah, I don't. F- I mean, I certainly would. Uh, if maybe if it had come out concurrently and was slightly more at the time or whatever. Uh, but now I'm going to take a couple hundred dollar bath or whatever to get better resolution. Um, whereas when I when I adopted the TV 4k standard, it was, uh, I, I didn't pay a penny more for the privilege. You know, I got, yeah. a, I got a good TV that could do it without saying, okay, well here's the 4k tax on top of it. So it's just not convenient for me at this time to think about, uh, playing games in 4k. And I know that 900 P is itself a far cry from 4k, but the, the only, the only console interstep there is 1080p i don't know feels like we're in shouting distance of that um we're in shouting distance of it i'm a little more concerned that i did read i think in the same article you're referring to that it's a 30 frames per second game that gives me a little more pause than the actual resolution um i can remember launch xbox 360s coming out uh and this was i guess this was probably around when i was in college uh and i would have uh yeah and so i would i would pull up the madden and go to play madden uh and it ran at 30 frames per second oh god it was choppy it was so it was really weird it was a a strangely unimmersive experience like playing a demo almost and i know this is a decade on now but i can remember 
going over to my buddy's house who did not have the 360 yet, just had the PlayStation 2, and pulling up, you know, whatever older version of Madden he had and playing it and being jazzed at how much more fun it was than the brand spanking yeah. new top of the line uh, console I had at home. So I'm a little bit concerned about the frame rate. Um, maybe that doesn't matter as much now as it used to. I don't know if I have a lot of insight on that, but but if we're already day one um, making these compromises. And since this thing comes in half cycles compared to the Xbox One and the PS4, they're going to be... I'm sure the first version of the next Xbox or the next PlayStation will be 4K out of the box and uh, maybe HDR and... Um, well, the, well, the Xbox the Xbox One S isn't 4K, though. It's 4K Ultra HD movies. Okay, so, and, it's, so it's, that's just for movie purposes. And also across the board, there is no state. The, the whole pro- there's also the other fucking annoying problem with this, which is that like, there's no. What per- there are a few on the PS Pro, and um, there but there are a few different titles that are that are 4K and they're very beautiful, but it's like it's a few. It's not a standard yet, and that's understandable because who's going to invest in that? Xbox One doesn't have it, but the problem is. The f- like some games can play at for at ten eighty p on the switch, not all of them that is bad that is very bad because the xbox three sixty could do ten eighty p that is not a good sign it's not a good sign when a decade old console was able to do a better resolution and on top of that they're not using um they're not using discs they're using cartridges which is i can understand with the portable format you don't want to discs jiggling around but at the same time that's going to limit their ability to unless i suppose solid state media is getting to a point where it works but unless they're going to be very clever about that it's going to be hard to create games that are that are capable of doing that i i, I just there was if if we go and we get nba 2k18 which is coming to the the wii sorry the wii u the um the switch if we get that and it comes out and it's a stuttering mess, that will be it. That will be it. Those reviews will come out and people, and I would argue the va- the vast majority of people do not line up overnight to get themselves the new console. I know it. they always, and Nintendo has already sold out immediately because somehow they still don't learn the lesson that you need to make more than like 300 of them. Right. And I've pre-ordered it because whatever. I, I buy a, these things. I claim it's for work. It's it's not. I'm just sad. Um, But <laughs> the moment they get that one review that says, and the, I my 13-year-old nephew loves these games, and he reads like IGN. If IGN goes ahead and says it's a stuttery game, if it's a if it has frame rate problems, he won't buy it. like he won't want to switch. Normal people are not going to want to switch if that's what happens. If what happens is this experience that's kind of fucking subpar and isn't as good as the other consoles because you know it's it's going to have real issues. And if it can't do its first party titles, which are the only things that it really has to rely on, then they're going to have real issues. If the first press about your console after the I think it was Leon did it amazingly it let uh, I don't know his real his real his real name. Maybe it's Leon. But he made it this tweet yeah, like Leon. I Leon, there we go, I'm an idiot. I <laughs> he made this amazing tweet. He's like, I had no idea Nintendo was doing anything until my entire timeline just became about Mr. Shirt or something like that. Because that's how people react to Nintendo. But now the high is worn off and everyone's got a headache, they're kind of looking into this console more and thinking, uh uh it's got this amazing idea of convergence that I've always fucking wanted in a console. I've always wanted to be able to just, okay, I have to get on the bus or whatever. I can finally bring that with me. That like, That's so good. But it doesn't seem like it's got, it, it seems like a good idea. And I don't know how many dances Nintendo's got left. I don't know if they've got it in them before they become Sega. Oh boy. Yeah, Sega is a gut punch. I, I don't know. I think that it would be, it's always possible, but to the extent that Nintendo consoles have failed, it has not generally been that the experience of playing it was substandard. Because I, I guess I would say, with the exception of the Virtual Boy, although I would argue that is how they intended it, it was just stupid. But they don't 
they don't make things that aren't that that don't turn out like they intended and 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 i i do compare them to apple for this reason because the macbooks uh and and certain pieces of apple software may not always be what consumers thought they wanted or did actually want but it's but it's certainly what they wanted i guess with the exception being the antenna issue that apple had on the iphone for a while but you know, love it or hate it, that the, the the Wii and the Wii U was was that was Nintendo's vision of what that edition of the console should be. Um, I just I think I would be really surprised if the Switch came out and it was like a hardware deficiencies, like the the red ring of death on the Xbox, um, or 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 having to reissue. Um, a, a new SKU a few months into the cycle because these Broadcom chips don't work or whatever. That's not the kind of thing t- Nintendo does. They may gouge yeah. you on a special color or a new edition or a new form factor or whatever, and that's pretty standard, I think. But what they put out, I, I feel like um, it's it's what they want to put out, and it's going to work the way that they want it to work. The question is, is it how we want it to work? Which, I guess in the case of the Wii U, it wasn't for most people. In the case of the Wii, it was uh, for most people. So, so what you're saying I is Nintendo's know. like the shit Apple. Oh, I don't know. I, I think, just, I think I, that's a bit... Uh, shit, shit's the wrong <laughs> word. They're not good at doing the thing that Apple does. Well, so, I, yes. They, they, they it, keep it, trying to predict it, what would do well. And they're right. really bad at it. <laughs> like, it because transfers it, into mainstream success less often as, you know, the iPhone being the number one selling whatever the fuck it is, you know? Yeah, so I, that's probably right. And it's a shame as well because the Switch is potentially... I've, I've wanted this since I was a little kid. I've always really enjoyed this idea of having a console that I could kind of plonk in and play and then when, I don't know... Veronica wants to watch telly as she can do that and I won't lose my game or I won't have to like you can't just sit down I think you've made this point to me as well is that you can't just sit down and play a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox game or even a Wii U game well Wii U yes you can but a Wii game even you couldn't you have to make it especially with Wii U it's like Wii you had to have like the bar but you can't really sit down and just play you can't do 15 minutes well you can but you still have to do this boot up shit and, oh, the, no. and the rest it's... mode never works. But with this, it's this great idea. It's like, all right, if I have 15 minutes pre- between calls, I can just have a quick, I can, I can get a little bit further in X game. And it's a, such a lovely idea. It's just, were they, are they too early? And is it too late? It's, just, it's all going to depend on late. Because there is actually, I strongly believe there is a possibility that this console will be powerful enough to do the things that we're talking about. Like, it could do an NBA game fine. If they can get Madden, they will, they will, I believe, do really well. I actually really, truly believe that they will kick ass in in the charts if they can get a good Madden game going because there are no portable Madden games. I think there was one on the... Yeah, there was one on the PS Vita. I believe I loved the shit out of it, but they never made another one. If they could get that and it was a good experience, that is huge. Like that so would be what's huge important, for them. What is important to you when it comes to this? Because this is something that I don't, I don't know that I totally understand. Because for me, the the sports games are a, it's an online thing. I want to be able to have online leagues with friends and 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 match do do quick matches with my friends online that kind of stuff. So for me, a lot of times these sports games are for that purpose. But what what would be what what's important to you to have? Is it to have the actual Madden game? Is it to have a, uh, you know, the games that I really loved that don't exist anymore, as far as I know, are the street games, NBA Street, and they even did FIFA, and uh, so these like three on three like arcade style versions of the games. Does is it? The, I want a full it, featured game, whatever it is. Full licensing. Be, full licensing. So just to give you an example. I love the PlayStation Vita. I really did. I fucking love that thing. It's and it really had a good. full-featured Madden game with a full franchise mode. 
and no, no and that FIFA with the same thing. I, I mean, I love that. And that's what I want. It doesn't have to have perfect graphics because the Vita did not. The Vita had console-esque graphics. Going back to your point, actually, about frame rates and such, and which it, which may make the Switch work, actually, which is it, it had a steady, like, I don't know, 45 or 60 frames per second. I don't know what the frame rate was, but these were really smooth games and they looked good enough. They didn't have to look perfect. I don't expect the world, but I want it to at least look good. Like I want it to look like a full feature game. I want to be able to read the players' names and move them around as I would on a console. And that's what it's going to be, whatever game I play. Now, I'm also having this problem where I think I've conflated what I want with the console versus its likelihood of succeeding which is the fact that I did eight years of fucking games journalism. But for me, if they can deliver a full console experience, if it's like playing a good console game, but in the portable form and I can go home and it's a good console experience as well, that's what it's going to be. Can they do both? That's what that's what it's going to come down to. And they've already got my money. I've already pre-ordered it. So I'm lost to, I'm lost to the world either way. <laughs> yeah, but you I'm, can't I'm f- vote with your wallet anymore. Yeah, I, I, I guess, like, well, I don't know. They'll probably... I know everyone makes a loss forever on consoles, and I think that's an unfair criticism of Nintendo, especially, especially with how daring they were with the Wii U. Yeah. They basically, like, gave you an iPad with it. Well, didn't get, they sold you an iPad that they probably lost so much money on. But they... With them especially, it's like, okay, they... They're going to make the money on the games, and if they can get these third-party people on, if they can get a Call of Duty-type game, I know they had the Call of Duty like Black Ops on Wii U, and it looked like Dog's Dinner, and people made fun of it, and it was bad, and no one was happy. But that's the thing. If they can get those games in a functioning manner, they will do so well, because portable gaming at the moment fucking sucks, apart from the DS. Every game that I play, apart from Super Mario Run, which I'm actually quite fond of sucks all of them are basically schemes to trick you into spending 30 dollars yeah yeah that's absolutely right I, and i don't know why that is i guess it's because i guess it's because we're not familiar with how much it actually costs to develop a good game yeah uh, and, and to support it and we would never buy it at full price i mean you know i'm sure you you just mentioned mario uh super mario run as someone who does not play any mobile games ever, uh, except for, like you said, the PS Vita and Super Mario run, uh, it's kind of weird how much our tastes dovetail. Uh, we but, should do a uh, podcast. Yeah, we should get together. <laughs> um, but, but to me, everybody was mad that the game cost $10. And I, I don't understand. I'm the cheapest guy in the world. I will, uh, I will look for coupons before I go out to eat. Uh, my friends make fun of me for having the rewards card for the grocery store and uh, and for all Not the those places. people. <laughs> I, uh, Sorry, I, 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 those are your friends. I shouldn't really say. It. No, it's okay. Oh. Fuck them. Um, uh, and they're going to listen to it, so fuck them. And. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, maybe... John, John Guntley, friend <laughs> of Jesse. Um, um I just uh, just this weekend, uh, I went to a popular wing restaurant. I'm not going to give them the free press because I I want them to advertise on the show. Uh, but uh, I used my rewards card to get um, an order of wings and uh, an order of uh, fried pickles f- uh, for free just for checking in every time I went on the app and letting them steal all my personal info. So you can't beat it. I'm very cheap. But to me, $10 for a Mario game... Yeah, it's like uh, it's like a sixth of what it normally is, right? Why is that a big deal? It was a, it's a fun game. I've been playing it for hours and hours. It's only ten dollars. I don't get it. I, I, I think what it was is what well, there is twofold. There is just this genuine, really weird, like I don't know. It's people think because the first game is when people were just learning that the app store existed, were a dollar. People right. got used to that pricing, and also Apple totally fucking destroyed. They fucked everyone. They fuck a- Apple is at fault here. They created this price system. Google kind of did it, but Google at this point is just test. Like they're just trying to do whatever Apple does because they're sad and desperate. I don't like. I don't like Android phones. I don't know. I don't care if you're an f- Android fan or have an Android phone. I just don't care. I and I tried. You can email up. Ed at ed at at edzitron dot uh, zitron 
and just no, let them know it. if you got Android. At Zitron.com. They are not a that is actually a Spanish turbine company, so please do it. There's probably some like Spaniard who's gonna get horrible emails. But <laughs> my 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 stupid point that I'm finally getting to is Apple has also made a shit ton of money off of this industry of kind of tricking you into spending money, so I don't think they're going to stop. They could have very easily pushed the less profitable but actually good experiences, but they didn't. Like, they, they just don't. They don't care. And I think people are just used to that. And I think the it's, a, it's also, like you said, quite expensive to develop a game. Even those ones which are horrible fucking retreads of Clash Royale. Like there's a Star Wars one that's a retread of, like, it's a mixture of, like, Dota and Clash Royale is fucking like ridiculously terrible, but I played it for a bit. And I spent, I think I spent five dollars without even realizing. And that's the thing: all of them just you're you're just three steps away from that. But I think that they're expensive to make, and people are just like, "All right, well, we have to make something, so we're going to make something that's going to make us money." And I think the it's just it. I get the economics of it. It's just so strange to me that. People got upset about the ten dollar Mario game when the alternative would have been, okay, it's a it's a free Mario game, and by the way, it came with a free trial of like three levels, which I mean that's it tells you what you're going to get if you like it or not. I yeah. think that's fair, but so would people have preferred it if they had to spend a dollar fifty to unlock Yoshi, and then like the uh, you got to uh, if you want to play Bowser, you got to level up, and you got to give me. 90 mario bucks or something like <laughs> is that what people wanted i don't to me it was perfect i gave nintendo ten dollars right and then they gave me the game and i played it i didn't have to buy anything i, th- I, buy think, anything what, else. I think and you know what there is an actually really legitimate reason to be angry at the game which is you can't play it offline right and, and that that's just categorically stupid i think that's just another nintendo goof and spoof Yes. Just goofing on all of us. Goofs and spoofs. Classic Nintendo. Those Nintendo boys are at it again. But it's just, (laughs) they've just devalued. I think that those play, look, mobile gaming sucks shit. And I think it's been devalued to the point that every one of these games is at some point going to try and get their hand in your ass wallet and like try and like steal all your ass bucks. And like, you're going to end up with like 10,000 credits in some fucking game you and you realize you've invested this money, so you keep playing. It's it's all a horrible psychological scheme. And it's just sad, really. It's really just depressing how that is... How Apple has made billions of dollars, let's not forget. Also, that's really what mobile gaming is. Like, look at... I mean, look look around... Like, look around like, at the marketplace. I would love it if somehow the Switch reignites that. And I'd love it if the Switch was the thing that made people go, huh... Maybe we should make the next PlayStation or Xbox One some sort of converged console. Maybe we can make it a console that you can, I don't know, maybe you can connect. They've kind of flirted with the idea of connecting to a tablet. I don't think they'll ever do it. It needs to be a device that comes with it because they kind of... Hey, here's a free innovation for them. Uh, Have it cross-platform with PCs. I mean, it's getting long past ridiculous at this point. Won't happen. They'll lose their money. They'll lose the, the, the precious bucks that they make. It's just a sad... It, 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 there is a sad cynicism to that. But the problem is, the thing that I attack Nintendo for is actually the reason that I don't think many of these other manufacturers will do it. It's because they had to use cartridges because walking around with a big thing, like a portable console, you need cartridges. Yeah, you, like you need you need cartridges. Like even the Vita had cartridges, and that's the thing. Are they going to change their media? This it's just when will will it be a hard drive? That's what it'll probably be. It's probably going to be like that's the only way it would happen. It's I want the Nintendo Switch to do well, just to kind of usher in that era of gaming. I just don't think it's going to. I'm worried that I will buy into this console. I'll probably end up just like the Wii, less so the Wii U. I was really just. I never enjoyed that console because I felt like it was such an arsehole to set up. Like you had the thing and the th- yeah, you always had to charge the fucking screen thing. And there if, were so many yeah, things. If, it really was though. You had to like have a. Fr- if they don't get rid of friend codes, I'm taking yeah. a hostage. Like fucking hell. <laughs> they, but it's like you have a friend. Oh, you can play with a friend online. Great. Okay. 
I, I will use this very memorable number, 54325. And same with Mario Run. Same thing happened there. It's just, and also just, I don't want to talk about Mario Run anymore. I played too much of it. It's depressing. But well, let me, they, let me give you this. Look, 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 you talk about complexity. Just this week, I went out and bought Grand Theft Auto again. I had already bought it and traded it in and got something else and didn't like it. So I went and got it again. I wanted to play it with my friends. Uh, I get it. So I get it for PlayStation, okay? Uh, it, it's a, a comedy of errors that results in me actually getting online and able to play with them because it, the game has been out for a long time, right? So I had to download a 13 gigabyte update onto the game. Ah, oh, yeah, that's... Which That's makes you wonder what's on the disc in the first place if I'm putting 13 additional gigs onto the PlayStation just so I can play. Okay, so I would, then I, I, I navigate the Byzantine menu after I go through the tutorial at the very beginning. Yeah. And I, and I want to go online and join them. I can't join my friends because I don't have a valid character yet, which means I have to uh, get up to level three on my character before what, I can play What game play is them. this? This is Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh, Grand Theft! So, I never played, never played that one. Well, you listen. If you want to play it online, give yourself about a week to get up to speed, and then you can do it. <laughs> Jesus. So I have to get up to level three to play. So I have to do all these solo missions by myself, so they can trust me with a gun. Like it's it's easier like, to get a real just like gun. real life <laughs> than it is to get one in the game. It's insane. So I finally get up to level three. Maybe we finally Nashville. find each other in the same in the same <laughs> lobby. And and we're going around doing stuff. My buddy pulls up in his car, and I go up to his car to get in uh, to the car with him. And it says, uh, "Sorry, you don't have access to his personal vehicle, so you have to go what? into your settings." Because <laughs> in the online version of the game, you can have your own car that comes with you from lobby to lobby. And I will. and if you have it in your settings that no one else can get in your car, then your friends can't get in your car. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got they gave me some free shark cash that I wanted to put on there. Uh oh, finally. And, and you finally I got my shark cash. And so you gotta you gotta Google how to get on it. You gotta put in this series of codes and then they give you three million dollars to spend in the game. So no one is free from sin when it comes to like the unnecessary redundancy and complexity of these games. It just seems like Nintendo gets hammered for it because it's not as gorgeous. You know what I think it is? I think it's Nintendo puts them in the places that more people go. Yeah. Or the places where people are less tolerant. So they put them in, like, resolution. Everyone gets pissed off about resolution. They put them in how you buy things. Mm -hmm. Because, also, by the way, it's much the same as everyone else and that you need to add cash. But it's, they, like, only take Visa and MasterCard. They don't take Amex. And, like, they're... Their system is so weird and slow, and it, it's just clunky, so people get pissed off with that. But at the same time, another great example is fucking Final Fantasy XV. You could, you could get this special pack that I got, where it was like, you could you could level up faster, or so, no, like everything cost half. To get it, you had to do this online demo, where like you had to click around a page... And do like this terrible flash demo, and it didn't work. And there were no guides online on how to fix it, and there's no one to call. It was just like a there. So, like, all of this pre order shit, I just couldn't use because I couldn't complete a really bad flash demo. And ah. on top of, and, and that happens so often with these kids, they all have like eight pre order bonuses that right. work to middling thing. And it's just, I, it's the, the internet is making things quite, I think that that also wrap us up as well i think that might be where nintendo why nintendo has been so hesitant with online stuff because online has become such a fucking pain in the ass broadband yeah, penetration is terrible in this country mm -hmm. and frankly a lot of the world and it's so they can't provide like providing a reliable experience is incredibly in especially when they're working from behind a lot of back end stuff here, pain in the ass. Uh, especially when they're already behind in the in the console wars that we've all fought in and died and died in the lost friends in. We're all veterans. Lost a lot of good but men. Lost a lot of good men. And a lot of good women. Jesus Christ. But it's, not that many though. Wow. <laughs> but, well, podcast is sexist now. But <laughs> so I said some things on the podcast. But it's it's it, but 
I think it is that just providing that consistency of experience is difficult, but to wrap it up, it's just, I'm worried that Nintendo's not good at providing consistent experiences. It's not like, like, to your Apple example, I think the thing I disagree with is pretty much every Mac runs the same. Mm. You put something on a Mac and it's going to run the same. The consistency of the Nintendo experience has never been brilliant, except maybe on the DS, which I think is a borderline fucking perfect console. And I just feel that maybe they're just having trouble with consoles. And my prayer as I end this podcast is, please don't fuck this one up, Nintendo. I need, to, I need, I need you to do the convergence thing right. I've been dreaming of it. Answer this poor little boy's dreams, Nintendo. Please, and then sponsor the podcast. That'd be great. Please sponsor the podcast. Please. And we'll leave our friend code at the end of the podcast so you can hook it up and uh, send us some it's- money. 42069, <laughs> the funniest number. All right, everyone, we, we apologize, but we must end this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I've been Ed Zitron. And I'm Gamer Jesse. I, and what is up, YouTube? That is the end of the podcast for this week. <laughs>